Hey there, Overland Park Chamber members. It's Aaron Atterbury. I'm coming to you live from Reno, and I'm here placing some spot bets, and you're not gonna believe what I ended up seeing up on the screen. Eight to one odds that Taylor Swift will be in attendance. Good morning, Overland Park, October 20th. I'm definitely gonna take that bet. Oh my gosh, you guys. So I saw on Instagram where someone from Overland Park said that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift were driving around Corwoods. Oh my God, oh my God, there they are. Oh my gosh, 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 oh my gosh. Hello, Greg Musil, Chamber News Network investigative reporter, following up on a rumor that Taylor Swift might indeed appear at the 2023 Good Morning Overland Park Breakfast. I have cracked the code on Taylor Swift, Swift comma Taylor, and know her local hangout. Now it's just a matter of waiting till she appears. Two hours later. There she is. It's Taylor Swift. Hey, Taylor, Taylor Swift. Dad, what are you doing? Looking for Taylor Swift. Oh my God, get a life. Okay guys, so I just followed like trailer fan 1989 and they said that they were at the Sheraton. I think I found them. What do you guys think? Like, that looks like them, right? Oh my God, it's them. Taylor, Taylor, Travis, Taylor, Taylor. Look what you made me do. Good morning, Overland Park. Oh, look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. Look what you just made me do. Look what you just made me do. Look what you made me do. What you made me do Look what you just made me do Look what you just made me do I don't like your kingdom Keys, they once belonged to me You asked me for a place to sleep Locked me out and threw a feast Today, But he is still partly responsible for today's horrible humor Aaron asked me to share a message with you today The lesson is to live your life Sign up to be an MC at a breakfast, book that vacation, take that class because you never know when things will change and you cannot live in fear. Aaron is an inspiration to all of us and we're going to try to inspire him right now. Alex, if you're coming up, we're going to have this side of the room is going to cheer y'all, Aaron, and this side is going to cheer y'all, Atterbury, and we're going to do that for time back before we're going to send that to him. In addition, there are cards out of the lobby if you want captured as you walked in to please sign those so we can thank Aaron and his wife Rachel and show them we have our support. So are you ready for Aaron? And you ready for Aaron? Okay. One, two, three. Construction. J. 
Johnson County Community College, Kansas Gas Service, and the Town Board of Construction, and the University of Kansas Edwards Campus. Thank you. If you would like to hear your company's name announced at every chamber event, we can definitely arrange that. Simply contact our chamber president and CEO, Tracy Osborne. We need to, we want to, and we do thank Humana, our presenting event sponsor for today's event. For some inexplicable reason, this is the 18th year in a row Humana has sponsored this disaster. Thank you for your continued support for the Chamber, and we will hear from you more later, and don't forget your cool mint. We also want to thank our silver sponsor, Budget Lines of Overland Park, and our bronze-sponsored Zuman Grumman, also the official hairdresser for all CBN male anchors. <laughs> okay, let's discuss the ground rules for today. We will hear from our speakers in rapid-fire succession. Speakers, you know your order of presentation. So when the chamber member scheduled to speak before you takes the microphone, this is your cue to head to the other microphone. Both of them are centrally located on opposite sides of our room here. You have each been provided with your allotted time frame, and if you go over that, you will be gone. For the first time in the history of Good Morning Oval Park, we have a real ball. Let's hear it for our ball. It's to honor the induction of Frank Evelyn, who is retiring from the chamber staff for his Selection to the Dong Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Frank. And speakers beware, he has an itchy Dong finger. Thank you for your years of voting. Today we are going to hear from chamber members throughout the city, covering new businesses, expansion, new construction, and more. But first, our top stories from overnight when you all were sleeping and we were working our tails off to make you smile. Johnson County based Garmin announced a new GPS directional system based on artificial intelligence. It consists of a woman's voice telling her husband to pull over and ask directions. <laughs> the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Safety Task Force has issued a warning not to use foods when the seal is broken. The FDA warns this is especially true of animal crackers. I didn't write it. You can reward good stuff. And yet another troubling sign of violence in the world, a bomb exploded in a cheese factory in Paris early this morning. According to eyewitnesses, debris was everywhere. <laughs> and, quite finally, a poll was released by the European Union testing citizens' attitudes towards various EU members. Regarding Switzerland, 78% responded they weren't sure, but the flag was a big plus. Go look it up. <laughs> Moving on to local news, we kick things off by going to our reporter on the scene, Corey Cohn. Corey, I hear there are some great things happening in downtown Oval Park. What do you have for us? What do you have for us? Buffalo State Pizza, or marveling at the clock tower, 
There's always something for everyone. Thanks to Corey. This is Corey Cup reporting live from downtown Overland Park. Back to you, Greg Aaron. Thanks, Corey. Now we'd like to welcome Bill Ferguson from Central Bank of the Midwest and Opportunity Now Board of Advisors Chair to provide us with an update. Thank you. Thanks to many of you in this room, more than 70 companies invested $3.2 million over the next five years to fund Opportunity Now, the Chamber's aggressive economic and community development strategic plan. Goal number one is talent. We heard you loud and clear when you said workforce is your biggest pain point. So one of our first priorities was to add an entire department solely focused on that. Early next year, we will release results from the first workforce study, which will provide answers to, to our questions and on how we can better align our talent needs and opportunities, and how we may market our area more strategically to prospective talent. Take a minute and meet Andrew Weisberg and Courtney Kavlovic to discuss our talent, your talent pipeline. Goal number two was investment. We've been busy on the entrepreneurial front, hosting one million cups in the chamber office, graduating our first cohort of entrepreneurs from the GAME program in conjunction with JCC's Small Business Development Center, and kicking off our first class of uh, Kaufman Fast Track series. Next, we're building a small business council. If you'd like to learn more about that, contact Tim Halverson. And goal number three was building a pro-business environment. We've added firepower to our advocacy strategy with a long-term lobbying firm in Topeka. Now, in addition to the expertise of our Chief Policy Officer, Kevin Walker, we can strengthen your voice as we cover the issues critical to your success locally in Topeka and in Washington. And if you want to learn more about Opportunity Now and how to get involved, let me know or contact Tracy. We'd be happy to meet with you. Thank you. Bill is kind of a big deal at Central Bank of the Midwest. He recently moved his office over the vault and now his assets over $30 million. <laughs>
eligibility for tuition reimbursement, and an average pay of $15 an hour. And the best part, we never stop hiring. <laughs> um, as much of you may know, um, we have hit a milestone in the Kansas City Division. So we hit 100 stores in Kansas City last week, currently operating in the KC area, and 100 stores actually in Oakland Park. So we'd love for you to come see us at 97th and Metcalf. We want to thank Council Member Paul Lyons um, as a chamber for helping support our grand opening last week. Um, we hope to see you guys soon. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, Stacy, did you know Quick Trip has a new specialty sandwich? It's a Pelican Club. Yeah. It's very tasty, but there's a pretty big bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you mention that there will be door prizes? Uh, you must be present to win those. All of them are donated by chamber members. So if you hear your name called as a door prize winner, please go to the table at the back of the room after the program to collect your prize. Here we go, we're gonna go through these fast, so listen for your name. First prize is a hat, koozie, and free treat cards, courtesy of Andy's Frozen Custard, to Tom Olchin of Avenue 81. Four tickets to the Luminary Walk, courtesy of the Arts and Rec Foundation of Oval Park, Molly Salisbury, Johnson County Community College. A tumbler with Jack Stack Barbecue gift card, courtesy of Association Insurance Services, goes to Ashley Stroud at Black and Beach. A gift bag courtesy of Charles Rivers Labs. There will be three winners. Jacob, this is one I'm going to butcher, Chishak, North, Northwest Johnson County Chamber of Commerce. I bet that's supposed to be Northeast. Uh, Christy Stahl in the city of Oval Park and Brock Aberley of Menorah Medical Center. A chicken nugget and sandwich gift cards valued at $50 courtesy of Chick-fil-A goes to Patrick Rafferty of Oval Park Regional Medical Center. A gift basket courtesy of Dream Dinners and the winner is Jeremy Johnson, First Interstate Bank. A gift certificate for four weeks of Taekwondo and a free uniform, courtesy of Elite Martial Arts. Two winners, Lori Curtis Luther, City of Oval Park, who used during budget hearings. Valerie Reese, Johnson County Community College. The final prize on the first set is a gift certificate for commercial cleaning services, courtesy of Environment Master goes to Nick Stetcher of First Option Bank. Stick around afterwards and claim your prizes. Congratulations. So we just heard that Opportunity Now is focused on three goals. Number one on that list is talent. Here to discuss the work of the Talent Council is Maria Gibbs from Well Sky. Welcome, Maria. Good morning. Thank you. Maria, give us an update on the first five months of the talent part of Opportunity Now. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we've been busy since June. We've formed a talent council, which comprises over 20 members of businesses and academic institutions. So, I would say a couple of highlights so far. Um, we were crucial to the RFP um, that was mentioned earlier in terms of um, working with an outside firm to develop a workforce plan to meet the needs of our employers here in the area. And so we provided input to that that was developed and released last month. We've gotten several responses and we expect to be able to kick that off uh, late this year or early next. And then finally, um, one other highlight would be we really rallied around three subcommittees um, in looking at com common and core barriers that we as employers are facing and those are um, our ability to target and attract talent, deficiencies in our current talent pipeline, and then finally retaining key talent once we get it. That's great. That's a lot for the first five months. So what are you looking forward to the future to do around workforce development? Yeah, absolutely. So the Talent Council really is um, a forum, a space for businesses, large and small from all industries, to come together and discuss challenges that may be unique or may be common. And so what we're trying to do is really understand what are the plethora of resources available to us now and that will be coming that we can leverage to solution the challenges that we have. And so we've heard from several of those resources. Um, our, our future focus is really cataloging these and providing them to members of the chamber so that they can truly consume them and use them to solve the challenges that they face. And so we're looking forward to a single solution and, and um, you know, whether you're a large organization wanting to stand up a veteran hiring initiative or a small company looking internally at your wellness programming, 
you can go to a single source and understand what are the resources, who are the contacts, and how do you start progressing forward. How, how do you scale this so that businesses of all size in our chamber can benefit? Yeah, I would say one is what I just mentioned around the single source platform. Um, secondly, we're also looking at like a learning event series where we can bring um, kind of bigger groups and all chamber members welcome to hear firsthand from these various workforce stakeholders that are creating these programs. Um, and so you can understand, again, how do you connect to the right pieces of information. Um, we actually are looking forward to kind of culminating a lot of this in a workforce summit later in uh, 2024. Um, that's actually one specific objective of the Opportunity Now framework is an event of that sort. And so we look forward to our first of that kind uh, later in 2024 and hopefully make that into an annual event. Thank you, Maria. Should we thank Maria? Thank you, Maria. We're focusing on providing actual work experiences in our high school students. Here's a closer look at real-world learning from our school districts. The Blue Valley School District, along with other Johnson County districts, as well as districts across the metro area, are engaged in real-world learning for our students. Our goal is that every single student who graduates from high school gets a diploma, but also gets a market value asset. A market value asset are things like college credit, but it also includes those experiences that are real-world learning. Things like an internship, things like a client connection project, things like a certification of some sort. And in order to do that, we need business partners. And so we're so appreciative of the businesses across the Johnson County area, especially the Oakland Park, who assist us in this work. Awaken the Public Schools has a variety of different opportunities that we give students in order to have real world learning. Um, one of the incredible opportunities that we give students is a program through Only the Medical Center. And that program is called Bridging Education and Medicine, known as BEAM. And so our students get the opportunity to shadow, to visit with, and then even intern, showing off their skills they learn in the classroom in a variety of different aspects of the Olympia Medical Center system. I think what really inspired me to do this thing is because it is such a great experience for me. I really get to um, meet with healthcare professionals, people that actually work in the healthcare setting and have the experience and knowledge to teach me um, what they do and you know why they love this job and why I should also um, join the healthcare field. Right now I'm working with the nurses um, at the internship, so I really get to follow them and see what they do. So at this internship I'm in the acute telemetry unit where I get to follow the nurses, doctors, the PC, uh, patient care techs, and really I just enjoy watching them uh, care for the patient. For the past couple of months, we've been working on this presentation on how we can help the city of Overland Park get lifeguard recruits. The students went out, uh, did surveys, and kind of gathered that information for us as to what are the pros, cons, benefits, uh, or otherwise of life learning, and what would make uh, or take away from the idea of becoming a life from the city of Oakland Park. This project actually helped us a lot. We learned how to research properly, and we also learned on presentation skills, getting up and talking in front of adults, which isn't something we do often. I think that this partnership between Chimes and School District the City of Oakland Park on this is something that we should continue moving forward with. As a community, we all live, work, and play together. We need to understand the challenges um, from both sides. And as an employer, that is understanding the schedules, the financials, the transportation, uh, and that, that applies regardless of what your business or organization may be. Before I dive into my comments, though, it is Red Friday. I am not Andy Reid. 
case you were wondering. But I always wanted to do a Let's Go Chiefs, so everybody with me, Let's Go Chiefs! There we go. Now there are a lot of blue blazers out here, and the Chargers wear blue, so you should check with the guys at your table to make sure they're not closet Chargers fans uh, before we leave. Uh, but lots of good news coming out of Overland Park Regional right now. Uh, we're excited to continue to help provide great health care to the citizens of Overland Park. Um, one, of the, one of the exciting news, pieces of news for us is that uh, we continue to deliver a lot of babies. That's very fun. Uh, this year we've opened, uh, recently opened a $17 million expansion to upgrade our labor and delivery space, which is really exciting. Uh, terrific space there for moms and babies and families to welcome a new one in. Uh, second big area that I wanted to mention this morning, uh, our growth in the area of park care continues to be really exciting. Uh, at Overland Park, we've always done a great job with that, I think, but recently we've added some new space, some new doctors, some incredible equipment, and in the area in particular of heart rhythm issues, we work with our partner physicians in the Kansas City Heart Rhythm Institute, and are really now one of the nation's leaders, not the regions or the cities, one of the nation's leaders in heart rhythm issues. So really neat thing, patients from all over the country coming into Overland Park for the care for heart rhythm issues. So lots of great stuff going on, excited to be a part of a uh, growing community in Overland Park and excited to help deliver top-notch health care. Thank you. You know, ma'am, both of my daughters were delivered at Overland Park Regional. Um, and so I have a soft spot for that. I, I just recently learned from the Kansas Bureau of Vital Statistics that Kansans, new parents are reverting to the old, traditional, classic names. The number one boy's name in 2023 was Hunter. The number one girl's name was Gatherer. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Next up, we have Brandon Prince, new VP of Real Estate Development at Ryan Companies, to talk about the new Oslo development. Good morning. Well, I have to say thank you for being so welcoming. This is Ryan Company's first chamber event. We feel very welcome. Thank you for uh, the Oklahoma Park community being as accepting uh, of welcoming us into the business format here. Uh, last week, we ceremoniously broke ground on the Oslo. It is our 413-unit uh, multifamily development at 135th and Antioch. The Oslo is 100% privately financed. We're very proud of that aspect of things. In this economic climate, we're able to get that over the hump. And it's because of all the businesses and the uh, tremendous opportunities that Oklahoma Park supplies here. So the Oslo will become home to uh, several new residents of Oklahoma Park, as well as existing residents of Oklahoma Park. It's going to help us fuel our uh, continued growth and our business format by providing new residents and existing residents with a quality place to live, as well as uh, our focus on open space, health, and wellness. So we're excited about what those will uh, be able to adapt here in Oklahoma Park as well. Uh, we hope to also share a little bit of good news that this time next year, we hope when several of you are leaving the Blue Valley Park uh, and Recreation uh, baseball fields and softball fields, your trip heading out of those park lots is just a little bit shorter. Uh, with our improvements to 137th and Antioch, uh, where we're making a little over about a million dollar investment into that public uh, infrastructure. So thank you for being so welcoming and uh, we look forward to a ribbon cutting uh, here in about two years. Of the Oval Park Historical Society, 
And the winner for that is Bill Bressler of Rycom Advertising. Congratulations. American News, this is just in. We have an economic development update. Back in August, the Governor Laura Kelly joined Curtin uh, Property Company and both county and local officials at 103rd in Antioch to commemorate the development of the former brokerage site now called Meridian. The $2 billion multi phase, multi use complex will feature 4.8 million square feet of office, 2,000 dwellings, a pair of hotels, entertainment venues, and over 100 acres of practical outdoor space. It is one of Kansas' largest and most ambitious projects. Just over a month ago, Shamrock held the topping out ceremony as they inch one step closer to completing its fourth building near 95th and Metcalf. Beyond Shamrock, 95th and Metcalf has some other exciting developments as well, including a quick trip, a Chick-fil-A, and more. Metcalf went away with the recently revised mixed-use project building with both commercial space and 220 apartments expects to start construction by the end of 2024 and with a completion time expected in the back half of 2026. And now back to our regular scheduled program. We know most of you are here because you thought Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey would be here. Unfortunately, they were unable to make it through a conflicting breakfast with Mama Kelsey. But we do have the next best thing. And that is Mayor Kurt Scoop with an over the park city update. <laughs> Take it away. Wow, you just made my day. First of all, thank you all for being here and showing your passion for Oval Park. What incredible stories we're hearing today about investment and growth and economic activity in Oval Park. But first, let's take a second and talk about the future. We're in the middle of Framework OP. Framework OP is updating our comprehensive plan in Oval Park. The last time we did that was in the 1990s, so it's about time. And we're having lots of uh, great community conversations about that process. Uh, uh, it's considering future housing types, transportation options, and quality of life factors in our community. Uh, and uh, the greatest thing is that we started talking to the community about what do you love about over the park? That's where we started the conversation. And what can we improve? That's where this started, great place to start thinking about the future. So what's happening now? We just opened the Longhouse, which is the new front door to the Arboretum, the Overland Park Arboretum and Botanical Garden. If you haven't been out there, go out on a beautiful Saturday morning, get a cup of coffee at the new cafe, and you can roam around and enjoy the beautiful fall weather at the Arboretum. 21,000 square feet available to rent for weddings, meetings, and community events. If you're looking for a place to do a board meeting all the way to all of your employees, there's a beautiful location there. Uh, how many people are enjoying 69 construction? Let me see. <laughs> I, the comments, does that play a part? Oh, you're celebrating. Oh, okay. Um, the comment I get the most about 69 is it's a real pain, but boy, they're moving fast. And that's what we like to see when we're doing capital improvements of speed so that we know it'll be done. It's supposed to be done near the end of 2025 with all construction completed at the end of 2026. Thank you, State of Kansas, for listening to us after 30 years that we need to improve 69 Highway. Uh, downtown Buffalo Park, we've heard a lot about already. It is a dynamic place. There's lots of new restaurants. If you haven't been down there, please go. Go enjoy the excitement of downtown Overland Park. We have the Mayor's Holiday Festival coming up. Come join me on November 17th. Where, uh, the, um, the charity that's getting the donations this year is the Golden Scoop. If you haven't been to the Golden Scoop ice cream uh, location where they uh, employ um, a, a youth in our community, um, please go and feel free to make a contribution as well. Um, and then, um, uh, you got a question for the panel. How does a pump, Halloween pumpkin listen to music? Geez, Mayor, I don't know. On <laughs> fine hole. So we have a new program this year. All those pumpkins that you have decorating your dining room table and your front yard and your kids cut open, instead of throwing them in the trash, please come to the Arboretum. We're going to do a compost of pumpkins this year. 
So feel free to, uh, to uh, bring your pumpkins to the Arboretum from November 1st to the 22nd, and we will compost them all. What an exciting place to live in Overland Park and work and play. Thank you for all that you do to make this one of the best places to live and work and play in the country. And there is more exciting things to come in the future. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mayor. I'm sure all the screaming girls outside would be just as excited to see you walking next to First Lady Amy. Um, Mayor Scoop just issued a proclamation declaring Monday, October 23rd as the start of Di Diarrhea Awareness Week. It runs through Friday. <laughs> well, the mayor took this up well, but our next business highlight we have is from Amber Schreiber, the co founder of Golden Scoop. Well, thank you, Mayor. How is everyone doing today? that. So, speaking of Golden Scoop, it's a non-profit ice cream or coffee shop that hires employees with disabilities. And it's not just about the work we do and how well we do, but it's also about putting happiness and joy and feeling like you're at home. You're at home. You're, it's, it's safe around here. And there's um, also um, this is not, not only that we want super scoopers and people and employees to be successful um, at their jobs, but in their lives as well, as well. Thank you. Just gonna say really quickly, I know we don't have a lot of time. Um, Mayor Scoop, uh, the Golden Scoop family, is, um, oh, I'm gonna get teary out. Um, we're just extremely grateful and honored to be selected as your beneficiary for the holiday fund. Um, they just put up some renderings. We're gonna open up a second location in Overland Park. If you didn't know, Wallet Hub just recognized the city of Overland Park as the number one place in the United States to employ people with disabilities. Also with this new location located at 10460 West 103rd Street, um, right off of 69 Highway. Um, we will, um, in our initial staffing modeling, we're anticipating hiring 50 five zero additional super scoopers, which could make that the single largest hiring of people with disabilities in this country. Thank you so much for demonstrating the welcoming nature of Old Park. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, next up, door prizes. Anybody ready? In the golf umbrella, courtesy of Interest Bank, Scott Keen of the Heat of Heats. And another one goes to Amy Baynard of Finnis. Two tickets to the Midwest Trust Center and some JCCC swag, courtesy of Johnson County Community College. Two winners, Angela Haley of Advent Health and Chris Perry of Black and Beach. A $25 Domino's gift card courtesy of PB Jam goes to Maria Gibbs of Wellscott. Next prize is a $25 Bath and Body Works gift kit card, also courtesy of PB Jam. Two winners, Joe Connor, Johnson County Government, and Carrie Doho, Doho, Doho B, Dream Dinners. Sorry, Carrie, I knew I wouldn't get that one right, but it's all that. Uh, $25 Scooter's Coffee gift card, courtesy of Scooter's Coffee. Angie Moody of Downtown Memorial Park Partnership and Laura Harsh, Shawnee Mission School District. And finally, a gift basket, courtesy of Security Bank of Kansas City, goes to Arlen Kleinsorty of McCown Gordon Construction. Congratulations to our winners. Next segment we're calling Chamber Update, where we will tell you some of the great things happening in the Overland Park Chamber of Commerce. Up first, did you know the annual meeting is right around the corner? Join the Chamber on December 6th for its biggest event of the year. This year will 
features some of Oberlin Works' top business leaders unplugged. They will dive deeper into what's top of mind for us, attracting and retaining talent, and talk about our competitiveness in an ever-changing economy. Shout out to our annual uh, event sponsor, Advent Health. You don't want to miss this event, and word has it there are a few sponsorships available if you want to talk to Alex Cook on the chamber staff. We want to take a moment also to recognize some of the new members of the chamber who have joined in 2023. It's been a fantastic year. We have 127 new members joining us so far this year. Let's give a round of applause to those new members. We also want to recognize those celebrating milestone anniversaries of chamber membership that are on your screen. Congratulations to these companies. Here's something brand new. The Chamber is excited to become a partner in the National Civics Bee for middle school students with the U.S. Chamber Foundation. A disturbing statistic compelled the Chamber to get involved with recent polling indicating that more students were willing to give up the right to vote than to give up social media. No joke, not funny. If you'd like to get involved by helping judge the local bee, contact Kevin Walker at the Chamber. Kevin, when asked, to be or not to be decided to be. <laughs> Reports are coming in from our correspondent from CADA that things on US 69 have been going speedy. With more on the story, here's Steve Roberts. Do not try to outlive your optometrist. 
they die like. <laughs> if you hear an obviously pregnant woman shouting, couldn't, shouldn't, wouldn't, don't worry, she's just having contractions. Okay. Uh, no, to staff, I'm going to feed them right here. Volunteers are welcome. Do not worry if your husband is bald but still holds on to his last comb. 95% of bald men keep their last comb. They just can't part with it. <laughs> Annual optometry appointments are important. I just had mine and I learned I was colorblind. That really came out of the purple. <laughs> Drinking bright fluid can become addictive. It's harder to stop than you think. Health advocates are promoting the consumption of dried grapes. It's mostly raising awareness. The American Medical Association has confirmed that dogs cannot operate an MRI, but cats can. <laughs> okay, you've endured that. Let's do more door prizes, okay? Okay, and this time, if your colleague wins one, let's hear a little work for them, okay? All right. First prize is Silver Lake Bank gift box, courtesy of Silver Lake Bank. There are two winners for this, Tammy Eikoff at Fantastic Sam's and Stephen Martinez at Sleep Outfitters Outlet. Next, we have a Healthy Sleep Ultra Tech Pillow, courtesy of Sleep Outfitters Outlet. Two winners for this, Courtney Osborne at First Interstate Bank and Derek Summerer at Mizuma Credit Union. Next, a $50 gift card to Club 27, courtesy of Sykes Lane Golf Club. And the winner is Monica Natsky at Advent Health Shopping Show. Uh, next, a $25 gift card, courtesy of Tacos for Life. Their, uh, the winner for this is, there are four winners for this, Meredith Baker at Omni Human Resource Management, Daphne Tender at Fitness, Anna Robinson at Omni Human Resource Management, and Kimberly Silkman at Upland Park Regional. Next, we have a gift bag courtesy of TFI Family Services, and the winner of that is Brian Roche at Charles River Labs. Next, a gift bag courtesy of Budget Lines of Oakland Park. The winner of that is Patrick Caston at Humana. In January, Hills Pet Nutrition, a leader in science-led pet nutrition, announced it will expand its footprint in the animal health corridor. The relocation of its global and U.S. headquarters to the Asperia campus in Oakland Park creates a new hub in the greater Kansas City area. The move is expected to take place within the next few weeks. At Blue Hawk on the 159th and U.S. 69 Highway, Price Brothers is excited to announce progress on the 250,000 square foot Advent Health Sports Park which held its groundbreaking last year. The new sports park will become Kansas City's premier indoor multi-sport complex and regional sports hub. Additionally, Blue Hawk has also seen the opening of various new businesses this year, including restaurants, retail stores, and a bank, making a significant economic impact on Oakland Park. At Galleria 115 on the northwest corner of 115th and Mall, they have embarked on the second phase of a $350 million development. Block Real Estate Services will construct five retail and restaurant buildings. Just north of those buildings, a medical office user will construct a two-story, 38,000 square foot building. In response to a rumor that Legoland was opening a store in Prairie Fire, Oakland Park Police are preparing for such an event, noting that people will be lined up for blocks. <laughs> you get it, right? On a less positive note, an Oakland Park woman was reported a brazen daylight assault outside this very hotel yesterday. She was robbed by six dwarves. Not happy. <laughs> Next up, please welcome to the mic Brian Roche, Executive Director with Charles River Labs, who's going to talk to us about its upcoming development. Thank you, and good morning. I'd like to introduce you to the Charles River Laboratories. It's a global contract research organization that accelerates drug development and brings medicines to patients that need them. We have over 100 locations in 20 countries with more than 21,000 employees. We recently opened a facility just south of where we are this morning. The scientific intent of that facility is to incorporate lab of the future technologies 
with cutting edge equipment and trained staff to build efficiencies in the process and thereby collecting robust data. We've hired over 40 people since July. We're heading to 55 by the end of the year. I would certainly like to thank the CRL staff that has joined me here this morning at our table 13. I'd like to thank the Chamber and certainly I'm um, excited to be part of the meeting. So thank you. Thank you, Brian. Brian also wanted us to announce that it has reinstated permission for all employees to wear denim on Fridays. Just another step in Charles River's gene therapy program. <laughs> Our next report will be a business highlight from Jennifer Lerner, Director of Marketing at BRR Architecture. Take it away, Jennifer. This song is terrifying. Anyway, hey everyone. Um, I am Jen Lerner uh, with BRR Architecture, and we are a national architecture design firm based in downtown Irvine Park. You know that Whole Foods that you guys saw at 119 Metcalf? That's actually our design, and it opens in November. We're really excited for you guys to see it. Anyway, it's our firm's 60th anniversary. We um, are celebrating with all year long, and we set a goal earlier this year to positively impact 60 organizations across the country. So we set out, we started volunteering, we donated goods, we sponsored events, and on September 13th, for the first time in our company's history, we shut our doors, we paused our client work, and we set out and volunteered at 14 organizations across the country. This is just a snapshot of some of the work that we've done so far. We've been doing so well, we're actually at 2,500 hours total to date, and we're not done. We've doubled our goal. We're going to go for 120 organizations before the end of the year. So we're not done. We've got a couple more things that are coming up. A national canned food drive that we're going to be doing across all of our offices, as well as a toy and coat drive um, at the, in December at the end of the year. Some of the local organizations that are going to benefit from those donations are the Jewish Family Services and Overland Park Christian Church. So we're really excited to be here. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jennifer, and BRR reminds us that it's going to get cold pretty soon. <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce... <laughs> You're retired, and I have a microphone maybe next year. The Chamber of Breakfast Network is dedicated to maintaining its position as the best reporting source in the world. Our motto is, we report, you deride. Overheard at Strang Hall in historic Oakland Park. My fat pair died. I'm sad, but it's a huge weight off my shoulder. <laughs> the inventor of the Ferris wheel never met the inventor of the merry-go-round. They travel in different circles. <laughs> the crowbar was invented in 1843. Before that, the crows had to drink at home. <laughs> Me. Oh, dear, too. <laughs> Our last and I mean our ultimate business highlight of the morning comes from Lisa Maher with Greg Advertising. Lisa, tell us about your move to Summit 52. So, yeah, good morning. Um, thank you so much to the Chamber people for this great event. It's my first time here, our, Greg's first time being part of the um, first year in the Chamber. Um, we moved, so, well, first of all, start Greg Advertising. Um, business about 30 years. Um, we've been located mostly in the city market all those years until early this spring when we moved to um, North, North of Park. Um, we have a great space. We're really happy. Um, where we're located, we hope to have one of the after hour events next year. So if you didn't come to our Wednesday wake up that we had a few weeks ago, we'll have something in spring. Um, anyway, we are a full service marketing and advertising agency. Um, what that means is that uh, we do a little bit of everything. So um, we have clients that use us for all the services or maybe just a few of our games or projects or whatever. Um, we have about 50 employees. Um, we are, um, we work with clients locally across the country in all different industries. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Um, we handle traditional media, social media, um, websites such as search engine optimization, um, a lot of lead generation, all, you know, all the different, all the different things in marketing and advertising. So, um, anyway, we are really happy to be part of the chamber. Uh, like I said, we just joined earlier this spring um, when we moved here, which was like the April or May. Um, we're so happy and we met a lot of great people. We're so happy. So, thank you guys so much for everything. Oh, door prizes! Last set of door prizes. 
set number five. Thanks to all these folks that have donated. We're probably giving away 50 prizes today. So um, if you didn't get, if you didn't get one, you're a real loser. Uh, <laughs> gift box courtesy of the Aesthetic Place. Six winners: Joel Freisler of Fortune Financial, Chris Martin, McCallum Gordon, Hannah Harris, Charles River Labs, Becky Ford, DoubleTree, Jody Dietz, Blue Valley School District. Chris Gray, Johnson County Community College. A $30 gift card to Chicken and Pickle, courtesy of the University of St. Mary. And the winner of that is Mira Steinberg of the Doubletree. A $30 gift card to Corner Bakery, also the courtesy of the University of St. Mary. And the winner is Stephanie Albrecht of Charles River, Charles River Lab. Charles River Lab, you try to say that. Uh, a golf set and a Starbucks gift card, courtesy of Wallsworth. And that winner is Michelle Green of Dream Dinners. A gift bag courtesy of Whataburger, two winners, Jim Lehman of Central Bank and Cassie Valentine of Black Beach. Finally, a happy harvest scarecrow, courtesy of the forum, and the winner is <laughs> Thank you for joining us this morning. Have a great day and good morning. morning.